everybody looking at bitcoin ethereum and litecoin on the shorter term and daily time frames looking at technical analysis but before i get into it i've been doing a lot of research into ethereum recently and more so on the fundamentals just because it was foreign to me when i was beginning to get really notice start noticing these charts but now Ethereum has the naming auctions going on where rather than having that huge long list of letters and numbers, you get you can purchase a contract for one year of owning a name that is much easier. So instead of being, you know, XZY34, whatever, I could be the chartguys.eth and that could be a place where uh, ETH could be transferred to me for whatever reason. So those are starting to go live and the auctions are going on and weather.eth was just bid, I believe, $25,000. And those names, more and more popular names are going to be coming out, seeing a lot of porn names getting bought up and really just watching to see how it goes. And it's going to be interesting because I had two epiphanies last night. Number one, as I was playing around with potentially starting to bid on some of these names, we ha I have my funds and my ETH in GDAX, was able to transfer from GDAX over to Coinbase, over to MetaMask. MetaMask is a Google Chrome plugin here that allows me to access the ETH and be able to bid on those potential names but what stood out to me was the ability and the speed at which i could do that so essentially gdax would be like my fidel fidelity broker account and then coinbase would be like my bank account and then metamask would be like whatever i want to be purchasing whether it be amazon.com or whatever so just comparing it to the way the system is right now it would have taken me multiple business days to transfer my funds from fidelity to my bank to be able to use it then we're talking multiple business days, two to three business days, and weekends don't count. And after doing this transfer with ETH last night, which took me literally one minute from to go from GDAX to Coinbase to MetaMask, it just seems so archaic to be having to wait where weekends don't count and having to wait up to 48 to 72 hours as opposed to one minute to jump these funds around. So it was really eye-opening with regards to how this could potentially change the industry, how it could change the financial industry in terms of stocks and the banking industry. So that was very cool. And also and something to keep in mind is if this naming system does become very popular and people start snatching them up and, and bids start increasing, with these one-year contracts, they're essentially locking up ETH. And the more people that buy in here and the more names that get bought up, the more ETH is going to be locked up for a year. So what that does is decreases the float of free trading ETH. And that also essentially is like a one year lockup period where the supply of ETH is going to decrease relative to if it were not, if we were not seeing this naming service go live here. So depending on, you know, it might not be that significant of an Im impact, but if more and more people start bidding on these names, then it will have a significant impact in terms of locking up that float and locking up those free trading ETH. So let's get into the technical analysis here as we've got Bitcoin still extremely strong, the hourly time frame continuing to form higher lows and higher highs. So if I was going to be looking at support on the hourly, I would look at the low of this consolidation. That would be the four, first support level. Then I'd be looking down at the low down here. Every time we see the bulls show up and buy the dip, that is a key support to be watching. So the first one is down here. And again, I'm switching over right now. So I'm looking at the Coinbase uh, BTC, ETH, and LTC. So it's going to be the same levels as are on GDAX to make things easier. So looking at BTC, we've got the first support that I'm going to be looking at is 1720.53. Next support I'm looking at is down at 16.83. And then I'd be looking down at 16.30. So the bull is still extremely strong in terms of resistance. There's a couple to be watching. I've got a lower high here that was set at 1758.48. And then looking up there at the all-time high, now 1770.62. So the bulls are still in full control. Want to be a little bit cautious if you're bullish up here. And again, this is not if you're investing. This is only if you're short-term trading. Just because we're seeing the entire altcoin space pull back. Everybody is taking profit. Just not seeing it translate into Bitcoin, seeing significant profit taking yet. So we look at the daily time frame for Bitcoin. We were cautious of the potential double top. That blew through. We blew through that resistance and saw continuation to the upside. So the bulls are still in full control on the daily time here daily time frame for btc with no slowdown in sight as of this point if we were to take out that first support that i drew on the hourly time frame we would then start to look for some lower highs and lower lows to form as the consolidation would begin to get more prolonged so checking in on eth much more significant pullback overnight so what we had was the all-time high 
and a pretty significant pullback from that all-time high. We established a support down here in the $89 range. We then saw the bulls show up consistently, but we set a lower high. And as soon as that lower high is set, we know that this low support is very important because if it breaks, we then have a lower high and a lower low. And that shifts the trend where this hourly trend has been forming higher lows and higher highs for a very long period of time. So as soon as $89 broke, that was a bearish signal. And you can see we dumped all the way down to 75.89 was the low of this morning. So a big time pullback there and almost a 15 to 18 percent pullback from the highs. So obviously people that are selling are able to reload a lot cheaper. And again, I pointed out the five minute time frame in the RSI yesterday. It's the same thing on the hourly. We haven't seen the hourly RSI get oversold often because we've been in such a bullish uptrend. But you can see this morning the hourly RSI dipped down to the 20 range and then we saw a nice bounce. So we went from Let's say 76 will round there. We went from 76 up to 87.69 in just a few hours. That was a three, four hour bounce and make that a five hour bounce. But it ended up seeing, let's see, 76, $11 bounce. We're talking, oh, about 14% in that amount of time. So the trading volatility is certainly here. And the play has been when things are oversold, you know, buy for short term flips. That's the way things are playing out in Ethereum over the past week. And what we're watching now is our low down at 75.89, but now we have a higher low to be watching as well. The bulls are trying to change this trend and recover, and there's our higher low off of 82.05. From here, the bulls have to break the high of this bounce. So we have the dump, the low of the bounce, high of the bounce attempt where we rejected, and that rejection again occurred at 87.69. We then pulled back, established a higher low, and now the bulls must break 87.69 to try and change this hourly trend back to favoring the bulls. So it's been bearish with lower highs and lower lows for the past couple days, and now the bulls are trying to form higher lows, and we need that higher high to be looking back at a potential trend change. So after 87.69, the next resistance I'd be looking at is the high of the previous bounce attempt that was rejected, and that's all the way up at 92.48. So a channel to be watching right now, the high of the bounce attempt, the low of the consolidation. We're currently fitting within those ranges, and looking at it on the daily time frame, we do see bulls buying this dip, and look at that long lower wick. And we had a really nice support level to be watching. Look at the consolidation that occurred here. We had multiple inside bars on the daily time frame, which means the range of the day fit completely within the range of the other day. And what that tells us is we're seeing consolidation on the shorter term time frames of higher lows and higher highs. And that's what this looks like zoomed in. So we had our high, low. I did the video back then uh, last week pointing out the expectation of forming this equilibrium pattern because that often occurs when you see a volatility and volume spike you see an equilibrium pattern. So we saw higher lows and lower highs, tightening range, and look at the support that we continued to bounce off of time and time again. It was down between 75 and 76. The low here, let's zoom into this area. So this was, again, this was back on March 2nd. We had the low of 75.54, 75.89, So we we're building a base in this area, and this support line, you can see no candlesticks on the hourly closing below it. And then we zoom out and see how did the price react to that previous support line from last week. We bounced exactly off of it. So previous support acting as support again. And the fact that we had an oversold RSI when we hit that support made us more confident that we were going to bounce off that level. If we hit that level with the RSI around, you know, 45 or, or not oversold, that would not be, I would not be as confident that the support would hold. But if you're down with a 20 RSI hitting a key support level, you can be more confident in a short-term bounce to play out. So the bulls are looking to, for it to be more than a short-term bounce, looking for a higher high to occur here. And we will have to see how this channel plays out overnight. LTC, Litecoin here, also seeing a pullback. And let's see where our supports were back here. So a very similar pattern to Ethereum where we saw a big spike and then we saw the bulls create support levels. And that support level with no candlesticks closing below them, was right around this 2190 level and just under 22. And let's see how the price reacted to it on this recent dump. We didn't even dump down to that level. So that support remained intact. But the shift here in Litecoin occurred with similar reasons. We had the all-time high. We pulled back and established our low of consolidation off of that all-time high. Bulls showed back up, tried to hit a new all-time high. They could not. They formed a lower high, and as soon as we break that low, 29.30 of the initial consolidation, we then have a lower high and a lower low, and that shifts the trend. So then we saw the dump, the RSI dipped below 30, strong bounce. We saw the bounce from here. It went from 22.67 up to 29.84. That's huge. That's a $7 bounce. That's 30% 
in just four or five hours. Candlestick shapes let us know when the bulls are running out of steam or when the bears are running out of steam. This is a bearish reversal doji at the top of the bounce. So after multiple hours of bouncing, after a 30% bounce, bearish reversal doji saw for a, a follow through on the pullback. Same scenario with Ethereum. We now have our low of this consolidation and our high of the bounce attempt. That's the channel we're currently in. And those levels again are 2984 resistance and 2707 support. So the bulls formed the high of the bounce, which is still a lower high compared to previous trading. Now we have our higher low established. We must break 2984 to then see a higher high and try and shift this trend back towards the all-time high. Same thing looking at the daily time frame for Litecoin. Big, long, lower wick. Bulls are clearly buying this dip. And we do need to be cautious because when things dump, we do give back bullish gains very easily. We pulled back and took back three and a half days of upside just in that one dump. And the bulls did buy that dip, but we have to be watching the shorter term hourly channel to see where we're going to head overnight here, same as Ethereum's channel. And Bitcoin does not have that channel because we have not seen a significant pullback. We keep forming higher lows and higher highs. So a bit more long-winded here, going to keep checking back in. I appreciate everybody watching, continued shares and likes, and help see as many people help have as many people see these as possible and keep up the comments in the bottom let's all you know source our knowledge and information we're not in competition with each other here trading stocks and cryptocurrencies and like i said that's what i love about it it can be a team game so thanks again and we'll see you soon